it appears that the Trump campaign has basically settled into stasis. I, th- I believe that the Trump campaign basically believes at this point that everything is baked into the cake. Nothing is going to change from now until the election, unless it's a sort of exogenous circumstance, a world event that harms her campaign. So better just sit back on your laurels and ride it out. Now, I actually don't think it's a bad strategy. I think that, that Trump at this point, his entire goal has to be just pouring money into ads that attack Kamala Harris's record and point out that she is just Joe Biden with a fresh coat of paint. Now, that's all that Kamala Harris's candidacy is. They literally swapped out one face for another face on the same exact machine. That is Vivek Ramaswamy's point. He is correct. Okay, so if Trump does that, then she's got a real problem, which is why she's been running ads in the swing states trying to define herself. She realizes that she's not vulnerable in attacking Donald Trump. She can attack Trump all day long. But here's the thing. That's already been heard. We already get it. Everybody in the world has an opinion about Donald Trump and no one's changing that opinion about Donald Trump. The problem is she herself is not well established in the public mind. And the more Americans find out about it, the worse it is. So she's got to catch 22. The more she goes out and talks, the less people like her. That is one prong. The other is if she doesn't talk, then it's going to be up to the Trump campaign to define her. And all you have to go on is her record as vice president of the United States and all the things that she said in 2018, 2019, 2020. She's trying to split that baby, presumably by doing only friendly interviews with very friendly sources. So it was announced today that tonight she will do a sit down interview with Stephanie Rule of MSNBC. Now, why is she doing that? She's doing that because she realizes she has to reintroduce herself to the public, but she's picking the worst available opportunity to do that. The MSNBC crowd is already going to vote for Kamala Harris. Ain't an MSNBC voter who is voting for Donald Trump. Ain't going to happen. Plus, Stephanie Rule is not going to ask her a single difficult question. How do we know? Well, because she said so. She was on real time on Friday, and she basically said there is no reason to even ask Kamala Harris questions. She has no obligation to give answers. And the Harris campaign saw they said, we'd love her to interview us. <laughs> I love that. Stephanie Rule saying right now, she doesn't need to ask her, answer questions. And Kamala Harris's response is, I would love for you to be the one who asks me. I, I wonder why. Here's Stephanie Rule just a couple nights ago. Not that, I just Harris said I'm not going to vote for her. not running for perfect. She's running against Trump. We have two choices. And so there are some things you might not know her answer to. And in 2024, unlike 2016 for a lot of the American people, we know exactly what Trump will do, who he is, and the kind of threat he is to democracy. Okay, and that is the person that they're choosing to interview Kamala, and you can see why. Well, of course they're going to pick the journalist who says that Kamala doesn't need to answer questions to ask Kamala the questions. That is an obvious hack for the campaign. But here is a wireless hack that can cut your cell phone bill in half every single month. The big phone providers want you to believe you need unlimited data so they can overcharge you. Well, here's the fact. Most of you are buying way more data than you will ever need. With Pure Talk, my cell phone company, you can choose how much data you actually want and you can save. Listen to this. For just 35 bucks a month, you can get unlimited talk, text, and 15 gigs of data plus mobile hotspot on America's most dependable 5G network. You know what you can do with that much data? You can browse the internet for 500 hours. You can stream 3,000 songs. You can watch 30 hours of video. That's if you're not on Wi-Fi. Here's the best part. When you switch your cell phone service to Pure Talk on a qualifying plan, you'll get one year free of Daily Wire Plus Insider. That's access to the full library of DW Plus movies, series, and documentaries, including Lady Ballers, What is a Woman, Mr. Bertram, and Run, Hide, Fight. Plus, uncensored ad-free daily shows, one year free of our kids' platform, Bentkey, and your very own free Leftist Tears Tumblr. The only way you can actually do that is by going to puretalk.com slash Shapiro. Call and mention my name. Stop overpaying for your cell phone plan right now. Go to puretalk.com slash Shapiro today. Switch to that qualifying plan. Get one year free of Daily Wire Plus Insider. But meanwhile, Kamala Harris is, in fact, saying some of the most dangerous things in modern American politics. I'm not just talking about the stuff she said back in 2019. We'll get to that in a moment, because every single day, there's a new revelation of something nuts she said in 2019, and then she'll be asked about it, and she'll run screaming to the hills with her hair on fire. I'm talking about the stuff she's saying right now. So yesterday, Kamala Harris made clear her most radical proposition. She was asked about killing the filibuster, and here's what she had to say. I've been very clear. I think we should eliminate the filibuster for Roe and 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 we need and get us to the point where we 51 votes would be what we need to actually put back in law the protections for reproductive freedom and for the ability of every person and every woman to make decisions about their own body and not have their government tell them what to do. 
So first of all, it's not even clear whether the federal Congress has the authority to do that. If you're talking about like an interstate crime, then perhaps. If you're talking about like an intrastate crime, which is what criminalizing late-term abortion, for example, in many states does, not clear that the federal government has the authority to simply reinstate Roe by fiat of Congress. But that's not the point. The point is that she wants to kill the filibuster. And the filibuster, for those who are unfamiliar with the legal jargon, the filibuster is effectively a 60-vote threshold to pass controversial legislation in Congress. And there's some workarounds. There, there's some financial workarounds. If there's a budget bill, for example, there's a process called budget sequestration in which you can use 51 votes to basically trump the filibuster. But the filibuster tries to guarantee that there is widespread agreement about a policy before it passes. So, for example, it made a big difference with Obamacare that Democrats had 60 votes in the Senate thanks to a rigged race between Al Franken and Norm Coleman in Minnesota that achieved a 60th vote for them that allowed Obamacare to pass with 60 votes. They overcame the filibuster. The filibuster usually has been applied to a wide variety of circumstances, and Democrats have played around with it. So the Democrats, for a while, used the filibuster against judicial nominees. And it turns out that that was not a good idea. And then they killed the filibuster for judicial nominees when it was on their side. And that allowed Mitch McConnell to put in place a bunch of federal justices and federal judges who are of the right side of the aisle in terms of originalism. And bottom line is this. The filibuster is the slowdown process available in Congress to maintain the constitutional idea that there ought to be broad scale agreement on major shifts in American policy. It requires 60 votes in order to go forward. Now, that filibuster can be changed. It's a rule. It is not a constitutional provision, but it has become sort of the last resort of bipartisanship in the Congress as the administrative state has grown and as we've changed the constitutional rules and as the scope of the federal government has grown. There used to be all sorts of checks and balances in the original constitutional structure against Congress moving really fast in really broad ways. Namely, it was a Congress of delegated powers. And if you actually weren't acting within the delegated powers, well, then the states wouldn't pay attention to you or the Supreme Court would strike it down. And then over the course of the 20th century, the executive branch started to assume extraordinary functions that really belonged to the legislature. They would just through regulation do massive things. Congress expanded its purview to include pretty much everything that, quote unquote, affected interstate commerce. And the Supreme Court, which had been packed by the left, effectively decided that it was going to allow Congress to usurp all of that authority. So as the authority of the federal Congress increased, the filibuster became the break on that process. And it wasn't an interminable break. You could overcome it. There's an attempt to filibuster, for example, the Civil Rights Act, and that failed. There have been many attempts to filibuster particular acts of Congress, And and those filibusters have failed. However, the general standard, which is that for a big change in American public life, you have to at least overcome a filibuster. You have to show that the American people writ large have elected people who broadly speaking agree with one another. That has been a provision that has kept the United States in a state of semi-solidity with regard to its politics for a long time. Are you tired of the lies and the twists of the mainstream media talking points? Yeah, me too. Join me in my newest series, Fact where I dismantle and bring truth to this tiring mainstream agenda. 